Hello and welcome to uh, Worship with South North Baptist Church online. It's great to have you join us today. My name is Pete. I'm the minister of the church. As we move into autumn, we see the colours change and the weather's changing. And today on our calendar was marked as our harvest service. I'm reminded that alongside all the things we normally do when we worship and when we gather, to give thanks to God specifically, to remember all the things we have, particularly in the area of food and provision. His goodness to us, water, the basic things we take for granted, aware that there are many in the world that don't have these things. The Bible speaks a lot about giving thanks. In fact, the Apostle Paul writes, give thanks in all circumstances, which is an important reminder to us, isn't it, in this strange season that we're living through. We acknowledge God's goodness above all. So we're going to pause and do that right now. We're going to take a moment, if you can, where you are. Then we're going to have a visual reminder to give thanks to God. And then we're going to have some songs of worship and praise to do that. And as we always say, do join in as you can where you are. But first we're going to try, if you can, to take a moment in quiet. Oh, 
It's great to have you join us today, whether you are a regular part of our church or if you're just logging on for the first time. If you'd like to know more about our church and who we are, we're based in London, South London, SE25, and you can find our information on our website, southnorthbaptist.org, or do get in touch with us. Contact details will be at the end of this video. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Don't forget you can also follow us on social media, keep up to date with the information we're putting out. As I said earlier, today is our harvest service. We're marking that as part of our worship together. And you may know that traditionally, churches collect goods to distribute and to give the different charities to those in need at harvest. And this year we're still doing that. If you're on our mailing list, on our database, hopefully you've seen information about how we're doing that. Obviously, like everything, it's a bit different this year, but our goods are going to Nightwatch in Croydon, who 
give food and support to those particularly who are homeless and in need. So if you'd like to help and donate to Nightwatch, do let us know, but hopefully if you're in our database, if you're part of our church, you've received information about that. We also have other opportunities to give in this autumn and the information we've sent around includes those including Christmas and the shoebox appeal and our thank offering which we'll be talking a bit about in our video next week. We're going to see a video now, a message from one of our mission partners which is BMS World Mission and this is for their harvest appeal and it's about the work in Chad and later on we'll be picking up our value of being a mission focused church. So let's watch this Harvest Appeal from BMS World Mission about their work in Chad. Well, I'm, I'm praying up every day that God will protect us. I pray that God will protect our team. So taking precautions, but praying a lot so that God will prevent us from being caught in uh, COVID. The heat is there and the fear of coronavirus is there. There is a lot of stress. How are you, are you tired? Well, <laughs> I'm still carrying on. Um, it's fine. That's my normal life. I feel like it's a privilege to take care of people and make sure that um, they're healthy. I'm so happy to do that every day, even though uh, in the evening I'm exhausted, but I, I will say though, thank you because you have granted me um, the privilege to so restore me and I will be able to do it tomorrow again. So uh, I've seen God really moving because people come to the hospital desperate and they move out of the hospital full of joy. So I, I'm so happy to do that. Um, I'm committed to do more. It was raining, and the van I was driving skidded and flipped over. I was terrified. I lost consciousness for an hour. I couldn't see anything. I lost the ability to do anything. A doctor in Cameroon wanted to amputate my leg. I spent five months with traditional healers. I suffered terribly. My boss told me that he'd been in a similar accident. But when he went to Guinnambour II Hospital, he got better. That's why he brought me here. My leg is starting to heal. The doctors here are really looking after me. I think that by the grace of God, everything is going to be okay. For those who have no idea about Chad and about Guinea Hospital, um, Chad is a country where um, most of the people don't earn much to survive, and and they need care. So the most that most people come here because they know that they have they don't have much, but they, we're, we're gonna care for them. I I would say to anyone who is 
hearing this message, you can make a difference in many lives. My boy is alive thanks to this hospital. Coming here has strengthened my faith. I'm so happy. I trusted the midwives. I knew I'd have a good birth. If my family, my friend, my brother fell ill, I'd call Kabasu. You can save a life. You can bring someone to Jesus. That's for eternal life. So there is a lot to give. Today, I can give malaria treatments to patients who come to us. Today, I can diagnose over 30 patients. Will you help me? Today, I can give the right medicine to the people who desperately need it. Will you help me? Today, as a doctor, I'm pleased to heal people that come to this hospital. Today, as a midwife, I can help 10 mothers give birth. Today, I can help ensure that we give quality care to all of our patients. Today, I can pray with patients in the operating theatre. Will you help me? We have Jesus to give to people, but we have skills to give good quality care. It costs just £13 to ensure each patient receives the quality care they need. For £13 you could help us save a life. And if you could give more, £80 can provide a nurse to take care of critically ill patients for a whole week. And could your fellowship come together to raise £695? That would mean 52 patients being cared for, four life-saving surgeries and five babies making it safely into the world. We deliver babies, we remove cancers, we stitch up gunshots. We identify coronavirus symptoms and get sufferers the help they need. We bind up wounds and perform surgery. We pray for the broken hearted. We show poor people a Christian welcome and we see them come to faith in Jesus. We do all of this every day. We do it through the heat and the long hours and the tears. We do it through the fear of Boko Haram. We do it because people here need us and because Jesus commands it. We do it thanks to you. I'm proud of the hospital because the hospital is really making a big difference. If you'd like to know more about BMS or about this work, do click on their website. If you'd like to donate to them, do take up the opportunity to do that. And information is available on the website. We're going to pray for what we've just seen, the work of BMS in Chad, and also for all the different situations going on in our world. So if you're able to pause where you are now, let's pause and pray together. Lord, we pray for the hospital in Chad. BMS is working with in Guinea Bar. We pray for provision, we pray for protection, we pray for grace upon the doctors, the nurses, the staff there, especially in this COVID season. We pray that they will have all the resources they need. We pray for comfort, we pray for peace. We pray for courage to keep going. We pray for rest where it's needed. Think of many other BMS projects around the world serving the needy serving those in some of the poorest nations of the world. Be close to them, we pray. Lord, we think of our other mission partners, international needs and other agencies we're aware of. Lord, we pray for our world. Pray for President Trump. Whatever our political opinions, we pray your healing for him and his wife with COVID at this time. We pray for peaceful and fair elections in November. Pray for our own nation, for wisdom, for those who govern, for equality, for equity, for justice. Father, we pray for our own families and loved ones, those we know and care about and cherish. Be close to those we know and love in this season. We hold them before you now. 
Thank you that you hear and answer our prayers, that you are faithful God. So we say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. As we continue through this season with social distancing measures in place, this video remains our primary and main act of worship, particularly our main Sunday service. We are, however, offering small communion gatherings, and we've started those this week. If you're from our church, hopefully you've seen your invitation to those, or it will be forthcoming. If in the next few days you haven't heard anything and you'd like to come to one of those, do get in touch with us. It's vital that you let us know you're coming to that so that we can monitor the numbers because space is limited. And please read the guidelines before you come to that. But this video will remain our main Sunday worship for the next while. We're going to hear a Bible reading now from the book of Matthew. And when we've heard that reading, Carol is going to speak to us from our Who We Are series about being a mission-focused church. So let's hear from the book of Matthew, and then Carol is going to speak to us. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people from one another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They will also answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Good morning, church. Today is the last of our series um, when we've been talking about our church values. And we have looked at being a welcoming church, being a worshiping church, a multicultural church, and a serving church. And today we're going to be looking at our value, being a mission-focused church. Every year, BMS, a Baptist organisation that we support, the Baptist Mission Society, have a harvest appeal to raise money for a project that they're involved in. And you may remember that about two years ago, the appeal was for a project in the Central Highlands of Afghanistan uh, which I worked with uh, when I worked with BMS. But this year, although it's again a health project, it's for a hospital in Chad 
outside the capital, N'Djamena. This is a place where a team of BMS workers, together with some partner-supported workers, are seeking to be Jesus to the people there. And you saw some of their work in the video earlier. Chad is a desperately poor country with very little medical care. It has only one doctor for every 25,000 of the population. If we consider our own NHS, even at the height of the present pandemic, they were never overwhelmed. And the situation here is so different from what the remarkable staff at Gwinnibor Hospital have to cope with. Despite their limited resources, they treat everyone who comes through the door of this desert hospital, often extremely poor, unable to afford the fees at a government hospital, let alone a private one. What drives the staff there, the medical staff and all the ancillary staff, to joyfully dedicate their lives to serving sick and destitute strangers? In Genesis 1, verses 26 and 27, we read, Then God said, Let us make human beings in our image, in our own likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. What have these words got to do with Jesus' words that we read in Matthew 25? Being made in the image of God means that every human being has incredible value because they are in some way like God himself, made in the image of God. The created reflecting the creator. And this is amazing. And this makes it clear that as his image bearers, we are loved and cared for by God. In his ministry on earth, Jesus gave hope to those with broken bodies by healing them. Paul said in Philippians chapter 2, your attitude should be the same as that of Jesus Christ. Jesus was God clothed in human flesh and he reflected his father. He was compassionate, reaching out to touch the leper, the picture of all who are unclean. Recently I read something that really touched me. The writer was actually talking about God's people who were going through difficult times, so I've taken it a bit out of context. But the writer said, each of us becomes a point of presence of the kingdom of God on earth. Let me repeat that. Each of us becomes a point of presence of the kingdom of God on earth. But what has all this got to do with a hospital in Chad? I asked the question earlier, what drives the staff to dedicate their lives to looking after sick and destitute strangers? And I think the answer is in the Bible verses that we've read. Believing that every person is made in the image of God and being obedient to Jesus' challenge in Matthew 25 leads the BMS workers in Gwinnibor to leave comfortable homes here in the UK, family and friends, probably well-paid jobs, to go and live and work in a hospital in the desert where it's extremely hot and humid for most of the year and they have basic living conditions, to care for the marginalised and poor and needy people. We know that God is an activist. Have you ever thought about that? All through the Bible we read that he steps down into situations to help those who suffer. And one example of this is found early in the Bible in the book of Exodus. Let me read you some verses from chapters three, 2 and 3. The Israelites groaned in their slavery and cried out. And their cry for help because of their slavery went up to God. And God heard their groaning and he remembered his promise with Abraham, with Isaac and with Jacob. And so God looked on the Israelites and was concerned about them. But not only concerned, we read next, the Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard them crying out because of their slave drivers 
and I am concerned about them. So I have come down to rescue them from the Egyptians. God acted. He came down and rescued his people. We read all the way through the Bible how God was concerned about the poor and the needy, the oppressed, the vulnerable like widows and orphans and the handicapped and the sick, all those who needed help just to survive. And our compassionate God is the same today. So how does God act? Well, sometimes supernaturally, but often through his people. So through his people serving in Chad, in Gwynebor Hospital, he uses medical and surgical skills, teaching skills to train nurses and midwives, admin skills to run the hospital, skills in running an efficient pharmacy, the compassion of porters and cleaners and cooks. God is as much an activist today as he was in biblical times. And in the same way, he performs miracles so that not only are people healed physically, but spiritually too. And of course, he works through his people there as they lead daily prayers in outpatient departments and wards, as they show the Jesus film each week as they pray for patients in theatre before surgery, for the chaplains ministering each day to all the needy in hospital and their visitors. Many patients come to faith because of what they hear from and what they see in the staff at Gwynebor. If we go back to our reading in Matthew 25, it's interesting that sins of commission are not mentioned. People are judged and condemned, not for the wrongs they have done, but for the duties they've neglected. And Jesus makes it plain that the response of love to all in need is expected of every follower of his. The deeds that we read in that chapter were obviously important to Jesus. They were drawn from the everyday humdrum situations for people then and for many all over the world today, including Chad. The point that Jesus is making, that it's in the humdrum discharge of our everyday lives that we are to serve him wherever we are. And there were six basic needs that Jesus talked about. Feeding the hungry, giving water to the thirsty, welcoming the stranger, clothing the naked, caring for the sick, visiting those in prison. And all except the last one are being carried out by God's people in Grinnebore Hospital. Doing good deeds is important for us as Christians, as God's people. Of course, I'm not saying that these can save us, however good our deeds are. We are saved by faith in Jesus Christ, but the New Testament is clear that our good works are a result of and a confirmation of our salvation. And this is why the health workers at Gwynebor Hospital are so passionate in their care for the physical, and the psychological and ultimately the physical needs of their patients. Let me read to you a quote from a BMS worker at Gwynebor Hospital. You heard it on the video, but it's worth me reminding you. We deliver babies, we remove cancers, we stitch up gunshots, we bind up wounds and perform surgeries. We pray for the broken hearted, we show poor people a Christian welcome and we see them come to faith in Jesus. We do all of this every day. We do it through the heat and the long hours and the tears. We do it because people here need us and because Jesus commands it. Despite limited resources and constant demands, BMS workers in Gwynebor Hospital are compelled to follow Jesus' example in loving their fellow image bearers, attending to broken bodies and sharing the gospel, bringing temporary healing and eternal hope. God created man in his own image. Whatever you did for the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. But our value as a mission focused church is not only a commitment to overseas mission, we live and worship in a community here in South Nord. All around us are needy people, perhaps even more so as this pandemic lengthens. 
Today is our Harvest Sunday. This was one of the most important festivals that God commanded his people to keep in the Old Testament, to remember his goodness and to thank him for his provision for them. And we do this too. And we want to thank Sue and all those helping to collect and all those giving non-perishable items to be given to Nightwatch, an organization caring for and supporting homeless people in Croydon. And in doing this, we are thanking God for his provision for us. As I said at the beginning, this year's BMS Harvest Appeal is for the hospital in Chad I've been talking about. It cost over £240,000 a year to keep that hospital going. If you can help this amazing work to keep going, please do. Pete put the details up on the screen and you can go back to it or go to the website to give directly to BMS. And please say that you are from South Nord Baptist Church. I do have new BMS magazines, and if you would like to read more about the work of Gwynibel Hospital and other work that BMS is involved in, I'm very happy to post a copy to you or deliver it to you, and contact details will be in an email you will be receiving. So thank you and amen. Oh, no. 
to the end of our worship today. It's great to have you join us. Hope you've been blessed, encouraged, inspired by what you've seen and heard. We're going to pray a blessing as we draw to a close. Let's pause if you can where you are. May the blessing of the Father who loved us, who made us in his image, may the joy and love of the Son who gave himself for us and the power of the Holy Spirit be active, be leading, be filling our lives today and in the days ahead. Amen. We're back on this channel. We have our midweek thought. Usually it goes out on Wednesday. And these services premiere at 11 a.m. on a Sunday morning. Do keep in touch with one another and with us. Our contact details are just coming up. Take care and God bless.